So welcome everybody to today's session on the Nautilus Experience 2020. My name is Krister Lowe. I'm joined with a number of the faculty members of the Nautilus Experience, Pim Harder, uh, Gabe Abella, Ruth Wagaman, and Carissa Bubb. Um, we may get some more joining as well from the faculty team. Uh, we'll see as today's session unfolds, but thank you all for joining in. Looks like we have a nice little cast of uh, participants from different parts of the, the world. And um, let me go ahead and pop over. We have some slides for part of this session. So we will toggle back and forth between um, slides and uh, you know, no slides and just some storytelling and such. Um, just a couple of little you know, housekeeping things around technology. You know, feel free to use the chat window if, um, I think we're kind of a smallish group, so I, we may not need to mute microphones, but if we start getting some background noise, I'll just be, I'll be asking you to be mindful of that if there's noise in the background where you are just to, to do that. I can also manually um, do that if needed. And uh, otherwise, let's have a fun and engaging conversation here about uh, an experience that um, is for many of us near and dear to our hearts. It's been a real, uh, a, of an experience of adventure, of learning, of community, and uh, many other things. So we're hoping in this session today to share a little bit with you about what is the Nautilus experience? Where did it come from? Um, why do we do it? What is it about? And voyages that we are planning to do um, coming forward in 2020. And so whether you're, you'd like to join us and consider, you know, consider coming with us, or you're just here to learn, you know, we welcome uh, all kinds of people coming on to today's, uh, today's session. So um, with that, let's just kind of get into this a little bit. So our plan for this call, this session today, is just some brief welcome and introductions. We've done participant introductions in the chat window. Uh, we want to just uh, have a little bit of introductions to the faculty members who are on the call today. Talk a little bit about the, the four outcomes of why we do this program, a little bit about the why and the what and the who of this. We'll do some storytelling from our trip this past summer. We were up in Norway, along the southern coast of Norway. We'll do a little bit of storytelling about that, share some of the voyages we have planned for 2020, and uh, if you have any Q&A. But you know, feel free, free throughout the, the session to do a little bit of a chatting in the chat box, ask questions, et cetera. Um, with that, I think we'll just, just quick go around. So I'm going to ask um, or the faculty, I'm going to ask Pim Harder, who was the, one of the original visionaries of this, to start off first. And then we'll, maybe we'll go to Carissa, then Ruth, and then to Gabe. OK, cool. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, welcome, everyone. Uh, love being here. You know, um, the Nautilus experience actually is a dream come true. You know, about five years ago, um, I was uh, coaching teachers who sailed on board of the Wilders Swan with students uh, from the Netherlands, and they sailed from uh, from Amsterdam to uh, to the Caribbean and back. And uh, I got the opportunity to train them in one-on-one -on -one coaching and in team coaching and that gave me the idea of how cool would it be if we could, could do something like this uh, with team leaders or with management teams and um, you know that all fell together and now the, the Nautilus experience is here and uh, yeah we will share some stories about how that happened and uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here and uh, yeah cool to um, to be with this uh, Fantastic faculty, and uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks, Ben. Carissa. Hello, everyone around the world. I just love these moments. Um, so a bit about me. I'm calling from London in the UK. Um, <clears throat> I have been coaching in many different disciplines with teams, certainly for more than 15 years. Um, the reason I joined the Nautilus um, ex the experience and working with Krista um, and some of you may know I now am running the Team Coaching Zone podcast. But the reason I joined was just this, I realized that I have a real commitment that people achieve a freedom through work. And given that work is so much to do with relationship and being part of a community, I, I, I first of all wanted to become, how could I become even better at not only teaching that or helping people with that, but clearly my own learning. And so what I love about this uh, program, and I hope that you're going to hear um, from Krista and everyone, is that it is a, an experience um, that allows you to develop yourself, which I'm always up for, but really learn who you are being in relationship, not only in a team or a team of teams, but in community. And um, 
<clears throat> that's kind of what I do every day in other organizations. And I just wanted to deep dive doing that myself uh, with my colleagues and peers and you know, people I would call my friends. Uh, and also to be able to do it in nature. So my other passion, if you want to know anything about me, is I love nature. The idea of being able to jump off board into the sea over and over again uh, just thrills me with delight. So, um, Which, by the yeah. way, I'm just going to interject, Carissa uh, really excelled at uh, this, past, you know, uh, this past summer. She was one of the first people to dive in, um, and then the whole boat basically <laughs> went in uh, as well. Great. Yeah. So just to kind of end the introduction, I think we're going to keep them short, but um, I, 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 what I decided to bring was all the experience that I've had working with many different types of organizations around the world, um, experience and storytelling as well, and team communication and leadership and team development and everything, and uh, put myself through the what do you call it, like the rack or whatever, and, and, and just see, you know, how, could, how do we really grow together exquisitely as team coaches, but also as a community. And, and, and as a community, what could we do to serve the wider world? And I was particularly drawn to the idea that if we come together, that there is a purpose out there that might be calling us um, as a part of a wider systems change, um, particularly given where we are uh, ecologically, but also you know, in terms of the human spirit. And I will end it on that note. Well, wow, nicely done. Set a high bar there for you, Ruth. <laughs> yes, she always does. I have this great uh, mental image of you, Carissa, jumping into this crystal blue water with orange jellyfish uh, around. That's, that's an image that stays in my mind. Um, so, hi, everybody. I'm Ruth Wagaman, and um, I've been a professor of organizational behavior um, in a variety of universities and have been studying the um, eminently practical question of what are the handful of really designable conditions, if you can put them in place, um, most powerfully stack the deck in favor of any collaboration becoming a truly brilliant team. Um, and that is the, uh, we've, um, my colleagues and I have published as the six conditions framework. And, um, and I've also been bringing the six conditions framework to the practice of of developing teams. And um, I think one of the things that called us all together as a group of facilitators and faculty is that we share a belief that all of the really important problems in the world and all the really important aspirations we have as a species are going to be solved and accomplished by brilliant collaboration. And so the question of how can we powerfully, reliably um, develop our understanding and our and our capacity to really build great collaborations um, is, is I think the, the core of what has called us together. I was really um, excited by, by the Nautilus and excited by the, the next round of doing this because I think this is a moment for us to come together as a profession and to speak as a profession and to develop as a, as a field and as a profession um, for the purpose of of spreading the capacity as far and wide as we can of really developing brilliant teams and our ability to come together in, and to learn at different levels and, and in multiple ways, um, I, I think is an incredibly powerful resource for the world. Um, so I, I, um, I can't wait for the, for the next one. And uh, I'm, I was enchanted by the first one and the, the many levels at which we learned as individuals, as teams, as a, as a collective, as a field. Um, and, and I'm sure there's much more of that to come. Nice. Gabe. Excellent. Not, very much not less. less. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, hello, everyone. I'm Gabe Abella. I work in large enterprises enabling collaboration at scale uh, in environments of uncertainty. So some of you might think of that as you know, code word for agility, whatever you want to call it, we're actually enabling uh, organizations to work better uh, at every level, uh, individuals to teams, to teams of teams, to leadership teams. Um, I'm looking for high leverage ways to improve the organization um, as a whole. Uh, and I think that's what drew me to uh, my fellow faculty as well as to uh, the invitation to join uh, the trip in Norway uh, just this summer. Uh, which is there's 
uh, so many rich experiences that I need to bring to my practice and I and uh, not just uh, the, the faculty but everyone on the ship I think uh, I, I imagine that I could learn from someone uh, something from everyone on the ship and indeed I did uh, just building long-lasting relationships that I still talk to people pretty regularly now uh, to help me build my own practice to help other people uh, build their own as well but that's what really what drew me was we I imagine this sort of magic interdisciplinary place where all we could do is focus on our own learning and then focus on helping others learn and I feel like in this community there's such an energy to really helping others uh, that I that's what drew me to that's what's going to continue to draw me to uh, the, the, this experience which is this uh, this shared uh, purpose of uh, helping each other uh, to really uh, you know uh, bring back to organization our stakeholders uh, ways in which we can tackle the biggest problems uh, that we're trying to you know overcome as <laughs> you know, as a humanity and maybe just uh, even the business problems that we have uh, in our work. So that's uh, really what drew me. And uh, I think what's even more interesting is that again, after the, after the, after we <laughs> came back, uh, there was just so much more learning. We're still harvesting what we're trying, what happened on there, as far as what it means to be a team member, what it means to be a coach, what it means to be a team of coaches. So those are all things that I think I, I know I'm still uh, making my way through and, and making me become a better practitioner. Well said, Gabe. I think, you know, that captures it really well that there's so much that you can't digest it all just while you're on the boat. It takes months to process the experience on the multiple levels and the learning kind of just continues. But, you know, kind of the scene of this, um, these experiences, we've, we've done two of them so far. The first one was in 2017 a 15 day, those are our pilot voyage between England and Portugal as part of a race of tall ships. And uh, our ship won in our class, but we were 300 miles off the coast of France and it was really a wild, wild adventure. Pim and I were there for that one and uh, 15 brave souls who uh, were willing to volunteer along with the, the professional captain and crew. Um, and then our second voyage was this past summer uh, along the, the 10 day voyage from Frederikstad on the eastern uh, side of southern Norway, around the tip of Norway to Frederikstad on the western, uh, to Bergen, I'm sorry, Frederikstad to Bergen uh, uh, on the western coast of southern Norway. And um, yeah, and that's when, you know, Carissa, Gabe, and um, Peter Hawkins came along as part of the faculty team. And, you know, so these voyages take place on the ship and, you know, we've really evolved this. So it's not just a classroom on the ocean, but really using the boat, the ocean, the, the changing environment as really the platform for learning. And, you know, I think this takes us a little bit into the why of the voyage. And uh, I'll come back to the Nautilus and why we call it the Nautilus a little bit later. But, you know, the ship, just before we get in a little more into the why, is a 1920s herring schooner that was designed to be really fast at that time to bring the catch from the North Sea back to the Netherlands. So it's a Dutch ship. And uh, it was retrofitted to become a sail training vessel. So it, um, you know, basically it's being used to really help groups go out and engage in all kinds of learning. And so, you know, we have adapted this for a team context, really for team leaders and team coaches. But, you know, what this um, platform really, you know, when you think about most of the learning environments that all of us have grown up experiencing and we, where we typically learn tend to be in classrooms that are nice, safe and secure. Maybe if we're in a nice retreat center, there are nature's outside in the windows, but there's a, there's kind of a static nature where it's very polished, very organized. And, you know, that's great. That's one level and form of learning. And, you know, we can, through simulation and different kinds of learning modes, create dynamic learning um, situations. I think there's something very different of putting, creating a learning environment which is changing, where we actually don't have total control to make it nice and neat and orderly like a bow. Um, where we may only have visibility for six hours or 12 hours or maybe a day, you know, we can have a general roadmap for where we're going on the voyage and what we'd like to happen. But we really have to be able to adapt in the moment to the changing circumstances. And I think what that really does is it ramps up the learning environment to be one where we're engaging in complexity. We're really engaging in this, you know, um, you know, cliche of VUCA, a volatile, uncertain complex and ambiguous environment. It's a truly a VUCA environment. Um, and so what I think it really, it does is it really challenges us to really push up against our edges individually, um, as team members, 
how do we work as a system, as a team of teams? And that just creates, you know, incredible richness for learning. In addition, you know, I've commented on a recent podcast that um, Krista and Ruth and I did that we just actually released yesterday. It's called Nautilus Rediscovered. Um, and I, I'll share the link to that, uh, you know, when, we, um, when we're done with, with today's call. You know, when we're in a classroom training for a day or two days, it's really easy to be on our best behavior. We're not tired. We're not, you know, being together for extensive periods of time. And you know, I was saying on the podcast is that, you know, I noticed 20 years ago when I got into learning and development, I could get teams or groups for three days of training. And then it scaled back to two days and then one day and then half day. And then now it's like 90 minute webinars or even one hour webinars or, you know, we do coaching, et cetera. So the learning environments have really changed. So, you know, on this voyage, we're kind of going the other direction. We're creating longer learning experiences where you get past the euphoria of the first couple of days. You do some night watches. You know, you're now kind of past that forming stage when you come together. And, you know, who you are comes to the surface. The good, bad, and the ugly of all of us comes to the surface. And, you know, each of the two voyages I've been on, I've, I've so learned things about myself that even after 50 years of being in this world, I never discovered, you know, the voyage creates this opportunity for like a mirror to be held up for you to see things that you otherwise might, might not see. And I think that's priceless. You know, we have a saying that you can't who, hide who you are on the boat. Who you are comes to the surface and that creates this great opportunity for transformation. Um, and it's so true. And, you know, what you discover about yourself are things that you probably would really love and some things maybe you wouldn't want to, you know, aren't so easy to digest. But you know, I think that's the beauty of this is that it really creates the space for you to, to do that transformational work. Um, and so Pim, Gabe, Ruth, anything else to add on that? I was gonna kind of cover a couple of the big picture things about what we're trying to do uh, in the next few slides, but anything to add that's percolating for you guys? Chris, it's Carissa. I just want to yeah. un underline what you said. So I just want the, the listeners to, to, to really get that, that it's, it really uh, looks at your edges in terms of who you are personally but also professionally as a as a team coach as an organizational coach you know uh the, you know how you look at the world and how you work with your clients you'll have the most amazing opportunity to think about this is how i'm going into these organizations and this is you know how how they might be experiencing um us coming in as well as the VUCA world itself so it, it creates a huge amount of awareness and empathy that's all i'll say mm -hmm. not just personal Gabe, I think you're muted. I, I'm, I know we'll ab elaborate on it more, but the, again, the being of a team member uh, and people who are in service of teams, um, we often forget what it means to be a team member and what, it, what it's like to be coached. And I think that brought that to the surface mm. uh, really viscerally <laughs> throughout <laughs> these 10 days. Yep. Um, and so that uh, empathy uh, that we have for even the people that we're coaching in the environments that they're in, I think that was... right really amplified during this experience another way to translate that is you may be really good at helping coach other teams but that doesn't necessarily mean you're great at being a on teams yourself right in terms of being a high performing team member awesome Tim, are you gonna jump in yeah i think that this program really makes a big difference for for a team coach you know normally team coaches just come in for for one day or two days and work with the team and then they're gone again and I think just the whole experience of being part of a team that's got a lot of challenges going on in, in a really uh, changing and emergent uh, environment um, gives you that humble feeling. And yeah. um, really creates a, a possibility for enormous uh, personal growth. Yeah. I like the word that you use there around humility. Um, and, you know, one of the things, there is a professional crew on the boat, a captain and crew of about 14 people that, you know, make sure we're safe and they're overall responsible for helping us get to where we're going. And, but we learn a lot from them. They teach us a lot. And mm -hmm. one of the things that big things they'll, they share is that, you know, sailing like this is a team sport that you actually can't live on a boat together for long periods of time, unless you are willing to be a team player. And one of the big things I picked up on them, which I oftentimes don't find so much in the teams that I work with or coach, is how when team members fall down, make mistakes, fail, how they rally to help those people stand up, just like really great sports teams do. And you know, one of the things they really were trying to work with us on was 
when team members, you know, make mistakes or are difficult, how do we get over that quickly and not mm -hmm. harbor resentments? And if there's one thing, you know, almost every team that I coach that I come into, for whatever reasons, they oftentimes are holding on to baggage. They're holding on to resentments, a lot of interpersonal, negative interpersonal dynamics. And you know, that's just one example of one of the great things that, you know, we get to play with a bit on the boat and, you know, that we can learn from being part of and observing and witnessing other types of teams. So um, I want to go over to a little bit about, you know, what are the kinds of things that we're doing on the boat? So there are four, you know, big things here. One of them is really around exploring different modes and approaches to being part of teams, team coaching, playing with team of teams. So we're, you know, really playing around with teams on multiple levels. And you know, in the voyage this summer, we had Ruth there representing six conditions, Peter Hawkins there representing systemic team coaching, Gabe a bit more on the agility and team of teams. Pim and I developed a couple of years ago, along with a colleague, Eric Kohner, an embodiment uh, technique called the five knowledge centers. And so, you know, part of the thing we wanted to do was throw people, the faculty who come from different disciplines where there's a lot of overlap, but really throw them in the same, on the same boat together and you know, really allow these different models and frameworks to collide and to generate learning. So there's a piece around that, really all of us having a chance to learn more about being on teams, coaching teams, leading teams, and also really pushing into this idea of how do we link up multiple teams? And that kind of moves us into the second part, which is around shail, uh, sailing a tall ship. So during the voyage, we divide the participants up into small teams and they learn how to become a high performing small team. But that's not the extent of it. Then the goal is how do we link the four teams up working as a system of teams, ultimately with the goal to learn how to take over this tall ship and sail it for part of the voyage. And so there's a real performance objective. Um, and one of my high, high moments from the trip this summer was we were in one of the Norwegian fjords. The water was really flat, but the wind was really humming through the fjord and it created this just perfect environment for sailing and um, the four teams were out on the decks. We had a couple of teams sailing the boat, two teams engaged in some learning. The captain and crew were all there kind of observing and supporting and coaching. And I just remember this moment when the sun was shining, the wind was flying, the teams got the sails up and this huge 200 foot boat just took off, you know, and it was healing the boat, you know, started to tilt up. And we were just flying and it was this real moment, magical moment of interdependence and, you know, of experiencing a team of teams. Now we had other moments that were the complete opposite of that, where we couldn't get it together as a team of teams and that, you know, created some richness. But, you know, the sailing gives us a real performance objective. We also get to be involved in where we're going because when the weather changes, we can't, you know, just go with a neat pre-predicted plan that lasts for five or 10 days, we have to make choices. We drop anchor sometimes. Um, sometimes we're going out to sea, sometimes we're staying close to the shore. And so we get to be part of just the real life decision-making uh, with having a goal in mind, but the, the line to get there isn't a straight line. There's a real zigzag. There is an element here about reflection and doing some one-on-one -on -one work and getting some coaching and doing some deep reflection for yourself. Uh, and then a final one around what is the collective emergent discovery that we can do as a learning community, that if we're doing this well, we're harvesting the learning, the collective capacity and leadership of the whole boat. And uh, maybe there's a, a message to discover about what are we learning about the world, the natural world, the larger human world, the whole ecosystem that we're a part of. And so I think there's an interesting element there. Also just learning around what are the edges of our discipline, the fields, the organizations we work in, and how do we stretch we stretch that. So there's a big emphasis also on not a cookie cutter approach where we design everything and remove all the uncertainty for you, but provide enough structure that it's not total chaos, but then also not pre-cook it and really allow for, you know, a unique learning experience. And I think what's exciting, again, we've only done a few of these voyages, is that every voyage is unique. They can't be replicated because we can't, we can't control all the variables um, for each, for each uh, journey. Any, uh, anything from the fact that you, Ruth, you have, um, you've popped something here in the chat window. I don't know if you want to give some voice to it or not, or is it? Well, John, John had asked a question about how, how do you keep the momentum uh, of this experience going after the honeymoon? So I was just talking about some of the ways in which I have seen the, yeah. the lessons and experiences of the 
voyage stay alive. And I, I'm sure that others of you can um, describe this. I, first, we convened the group again virtually after the voyage was over, um, and intentionally uh, a little more than a month because we wanted to ask the question, what of, your, what of the experience has stayed with you and is still alive in the way that, in, in, in the way that you have been changed um, personally and professionally? And there were, I think we're, there were some genuinely profound um, changes that, that people shared from that. We also have a, a, a group that is convening regularly to explore ways of actually working together. One of the things we noted is that um, we work with teams, but most of us are solo practitioners, and there are so many ways in which we could be um, mutually supportive and collaborate with each other in this work that we do. And the third is just the informal stuff. So many of us are continuing to connect with each other in dyads and triads, whether it's virtually or in uh, in person. Um, and that's that's just the connections among those of us who are on the voyage together. I think over time, as we do more of these, there are many things that we can write and speak about and share with the larger field about what it is that we're learning. Well said, Ruth. So just kind of moving on and then we'll kind of get into a little bit more storytelling here. Um, so when you think about like who's on the boat, so roughly we have about 40 people on the ship, um, approximately around 20 participants, plus or minus, depending on how many. And what we're really targeting are team leaders. So actually people who work in organizations who lead teams um, and team coaches. So those are kind of the two main populations we're going after. We're not, you know, restricting other people who can can't, but you know, I think this is the audience that we think would most find this valuable. Um, for the 2020 trips, Gabe Abella, Carissa Pim, Jason Igani, who's not on the call today. Jason was one of the participants um, this year, and he's moving into a faculty role. He's actually working with the team today, so I don't think he can make it. Uh, myself and Ruth. Uh, Peter Hawkins is part of our team, but not available in 2020, so he'll be coming back to the 2021 voyages that we'll be doing. And then there is a nautical crew, a professional crew that um, you know does this for you know sales for a living and so you know they really ensure the safety and you know help us make sure we're complying and they have a lot of experience with these kind of voyages so that's kind of who's on the boat and uh, again i think part of the the challenge is how do we co-create an experience together that leverages all of the talent and you know capacity that's on the boat and that's you know part of our our challenge together is to co-create something um, really valuable. And one of the things I'll say about the faculty team is, you know, we are evolving our role and, and you know, we kind of feel like our role is to provide some boundaries, to provide um, some structure to the program, but not to over design it. And I think you could probably say we're probably more in a coaching kind of role. And, uh, you know, going back and forth between a couple of hats around facilitation, um, but really very much a coaching from behind role to set up a set of in, uh, environmental conditions that allow for an emergent learning experience to happen. Um, and I think that's, that's part of the, you know, the fun of this, you know, I think when my first voyage, when we were 300 miles off the coast of France, this was my first time a being out on a ship like this, 300 miles off the coast and those kinds of conditions, but also leading a program that I had designed with Pim and Eric Kohner, another one of my colleagues. And, you know, I think it really puts this idea of working in uncertainty into an, a whole nother uh, level in terms of the volume of that, right? Because you, you really have to be nimble and on your feet. You plan to do a session on the deck. It's not appropriate. You got to go into the galley. Now, that's one of the, I think one of the big learnings is learning how to be more adaptable and nimble and working with less than ideal conditions, right? And learning how to let go of your plan and working what's in the moment, which, you know, for many coaches, that's kind of what coaches are comfortable with. But, um, you know, that for me has been, been a personally very valuable part of this. So what I want to do is get into, here's some pictures from the voyage we did this past, um, this past July in Norway. And um, I thought it'd be great if Gabe, Pim, Carissa, Ruth, if you guys have any stories about the voyage you like to share in the next 10 minutes or so. We just we thought we'd do a little bit of storytelling. In that um, second column of pictures, the third one down, I see Gabe and me, and I'm, I think that's either right before or right after we climbed out on the bowsprit. Um, and we're, we're, so we're way out on the, 
uh, on the bowsprit while the ship is underway, just having an incredibly magical moment riding over the waves. Um, but I think one of the things that um, that stayed with me, and I think that any potential participant um, would want to know, is uh, really how um, powerful the experience of becoming really bounded teams with a shared purpose and a shared identity um, and really working interdependently, how powerful that ex experience was. Um, I, I remember the deep waters and the cuddly krakens, and you guys will remember the other, the rest of the, the team names. <laughs> the names but, of the teams. But, but Gabe led, led the um, group through, we did a very intentional um, team formation process where people got to explore different potential configurations and then committed to becoming part of a small group of five people plus a, a, a facilitator a faculty coach who were part of those teams. Um, and we did a lot of things interdependently together, like we learned to sail together. We learned about navigation and about we and about the sails and and about helming, um, I, I should mention that the the crew were, are fantastic teachers. They are, in fact, teachers. They do a lot of teaching. Um, and uh, that became an incredibly powerful experience. And in terms of the like emergent structure and emergent design, we discovered a few days in that really two teams at a time could be working together to sail the vessel with the with the coaching of the professional crew, but independently, the um, two teams together, and then the other two teams invented a structure of being the the fishing groups, right? So they were exploring um, ideas uh, and and big questions about team development while the other two groups were actually sailing, and then we flipped those roles on other days. That was an invented um, structure that I think was an incredibly rich. Um, contribution of the whole um, collective of us inventing a way of, of enriching the experience for everyone. I just wanted to add on, Ruth, because uh, one thing that became just so evident once everyone got on board, which is the capacities of everyone on the, the ship were already amazing. Like everyone is well accomplished in what they're doing. And then so when we formed teams and decided uh, once, once teams were formed, what was amazing to me is that each of the teams uh, went about bonding in different ways, which is exactly what the point is, right? We all don't want everyone going through the exact same process, and they chose different ways to do it. They, choose, they chose different times to do it. They chose different times during the trip in which to attend to their social system. And that to me was just the fact that we were seeing so much experimentation um, by the fact that it was, uh, they were making choices intentionally within their own teams on how they wanted to develop themselves. For us, for me as a faculty member, it was like, I was learning so much about the different ways each of the different teams were doing it that I felt like um, this was why I wanted to be here. It wasn't just about, it, by no means is it just us teaching a bunch of people that would be a waste of our time as well and their time as well. It was about what we're, they were revealing, the participants were revealing to each other and to us about how teams form and operate under these conditions, I think was the really richest learning for me. Mm. Nice. Pim, are you going to say something? <laughs> Otherwise, I'll go. <laughs> you can go, uh, Carissa. You can go. I was just echoing uh, what, what Gabe was saying. I was thinking about that. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, I love what you say, Gabe. Okay. So I'll just build on what Krista, um, Ruth and Pim said and say, that, you know, as a faculty team, we were a team. We were also a, not not uh, Krista and Pim. And I'm looking at the bottom right there, Pim talking to the captain, Tony. And I'm just reminded of, we created a governance uh, structure and the challenges of being both, uh, what the learning of being both on a faculty team and also being a member of a team and you know what that was like and how authority played out and how you just saw the whole power and systems things play up. Uh, and that was an incredibly rich experience. Um, you know, sometimes wanting to be part of your sailing team more than you want to be part of the faculty team and then having the responsibility of being a faculty team and then just watching, you know, how do we really distribute leadership and authority um, across the teams. And so there was a really fascinating um, uh, experience on play that was was really quite a, an amazing dynamic to watch on on board the ship and there was, there was a huge learning that i got from that mm. um, 
Nice. One of the stories came up for me, you know, this voyage we did in, in Norway, uh, when we came down the east coast of Norway, the conditions were pretty good. It wasn't very rough. And then when we tried to turn, you know, turn on the tip to go around the up the west coast, the wind coming down was so strong. Had we gone out into it, everybody would have been seasick and the boat could have been damaged. It was that strong of wind. So we basically had to, um, you know, pivot and make a decision. And I was kind of working off of our first experience, the England to Portugal trip where we were sailing nonstop for nine days across the Bay of Biscay. It was, there was no, no pausing. This trip, we had to pivot. And, um, you know, this is one of the challenges for me because, again, I was comparing my, the first voyage to this one. And so we had to actually stop and drop anchor in a, uh, a little fishing village along the coast, not planned. And that, though, turned out to be one of the best parts, the highlights of the trip for me. We dropped anchor. It was beautiful. There were all these kind of small houses dotting the shoreline. Um, people were coming by on boats. We dropped anchor. Carissa went overboard to go swimming. I thought it was going to be terribly cold, but it turns out that the, you know, these little inlets along the Norwegian coast are not that cold in the summer. I guess they get a lot of sunlight. So once Carissa was in, two or three others went in and then like 20 of us were in. So we were swimming and we had music and singing. And there was something about, you know, what I, I came to think, of, think about an insight for me and something I've been also mindful of with teams is just kind of the natural cadences and rhythms of organizational life around when it's time to step on the gas versus when it's time to, you know, drop sails and just be and be still. And, you know, that's one of the things I love about being on this, these boats is when we're out in the ocean and it's wavy and the wind's flying and the boat's healed up it's a lot of action, you know, you really got to be on, you kind of can't ignore it. And, um, you know, and then there are moments when it's really still and serene and there's some just beautiful evenings when the sun was setting and we would be sitting around singing, telling stories and, you know, various talents coming out and that whole, that whole range of stopping and just being to really high intensity action moments. I think that's, you know, a beautiful, you know, part of the, the experience I remember. I, I also see, you know, in some of these pictures on the right side there in the middle is uh, a guy, Felipe Paiva and uh, Amy Lace right below. I, they were part of Ruth's team that Ruth was part of in coaching. And they were the first ones to go up into the rigging. So one of the things you get an opportunity to do if you want is to go up into the rigging. You get a chance to helm the boat, you know, steer the boat. You can go up into the bow sprit. That's the net up in the front. I'm curious, Ruth, um, you're not in that picture, but I know you were part of that team going up there. What was it like going up into the rigging? Oh, that was amazing. It was exhilarating. It was also um, challenging was at moments. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ter terrifying because yeah. We're, we're not doing this while anchored. We're doing this underway. And, yeah. and now as you're climbing the rigging, this you, you go this way first, and then there's a point at which you're changing your angle um uh you're you're clipping on to the rigging by the way so uh so the risk of actual falls is uh is low but it's the view is stunning and spectacular but of of course at that height the movement of the ship is felt uh, much much more dramatically uh so that that whole experience of the wind in the air and the and the colors and the uh, and the waves is incredibly incredibly powerful um, I also wanted to draw attention to the top picture in the middle column, just so everybody understands that there's lots of singing and dancing and celebration. <laughs> yeah. This was one of our, this was a visit to the Shabab Oman, which is an Omani um, ship that was uh, anchored near us. And that invited us to to come for a, an evening reception and a, and a tour of the ship. So there are many tall ships um, sailing in, in company with us. And that was uh, there their invitation to music and, and dancing and celebration. Nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Chris, are you going to share? No, I was just going to, uh, yeah. there's so many stories that don't get me started. No, I was just, <laughs> uh, I was looking at Jason there for people who want to know what Jason yeah. is the guy on the top, in the middle, the top, uh, the top yeah. picture there. And, and I was just thinking actually that, what was one of the most magnificent things, these were long days because we were in Norway in summer. So, you know, we had yoga at 7, 7.30 in the morning or 7 in the morning. 
led by uh, one of the uh, participants. And then, you know, I remember being at two in the morning out there under the moon doing anchor watch uh, while people were still partying and talking. And um, I slept outside on the deck and there was just something magical. Mm. It just felt so natural Mm. and uh, really at one with everyone and everything. It was really magical. Nice. And uh, just to say, you know, we cater to people of all um, abilities in terms of zero sailing experience to pretty experienced sailors come on, um, folks of really varying levels of physical, you know, fitness and capability. So, um, you know, all of a lot of the stuff that goes on is really optional. And that's, you know, part of being a team is really understanding what your limits are and what your comfort levels are. And, you know, there's a kind of a whole piece just around everything we do is, you know, grounded in safety, obviously. So to have a safe experience. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know if there's any other stories. I see Windsor has a question here in the chat window around how much was relationship building a factor versus the application of technique in managing and defining the overall team's success in each team's success. Mm, great question. So I'm, I'm happy to, uh, that sort of spark, I was gonna jump in there. It's a great yeah. comment, Windsor, which is um, sort of what, what kind of brings me to this, this group um, and the way that we think about uh, teams, and if we go back to, I'll just le- uh, lean on the six conditions, which is the, the foundation of my practice. But essentially, we're, we're looking at both. Um, you're looking at both the social system, which is what are the connections the, uh, that uh, need to be in place to enable a, a group of human beings to work together. But then what are these structures that also need to be in place uh, that um, will channel their energy towards an outcome. In this case, sailing uh, the boat um, with everyone's, you know, feet and body intact and staying on the boat. Um, and so, uh, I, my my answer is is we address both. I think that was always uh, one of the things that we tried to do. And we and, and um, what was useful on the boat for us was we were as uh, as a crew. Uh, as a faculty was trying to create these structures, these decentralized uh, management, decentralized control, distributed leadership. These are all things that you need to do in an, in a, in an organization as well, mm-hmm. but more so uh, on this boat where you couldn't really see everyone at the same time. I mean, you could be on, uh, we were, when we were doing our uh, sailing uh, watches, um, the boats, it's a large boat. And so there's things you have to put in place on how you're gonna, keep, how you're gonna communicate with each other with the agreements you have in place uh, to make sure that everyone is aligned, whether that's during your, during your watch or in between watches, these are all things that we were trying to test with each other. What, what, in which ways can we actually collaborate with each other um, synchronously and asynchronously uh, in the same ways that we would need to do it in complex uh, uh, environments. I don't know if that answers your question, Windsor. Yeah, uh, Ruth, I thought you were going to pop in on that in. one too. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was reflecting on um, maybe technique and relationship building are not in tension with each other or, or opposites of each other. Uh, what comes to mind is that some of the investment that we made in, in doing public narrative and story of self with each other, which is a technique, but it's, uh, it's a practice, but it's a practice about... Um, you know, teaching something about yourself and, and your values in a way that allows, allows people to connect with each other around shared values and shared purpose. And I think it powerfully does both. It does relationship building and it is, uh, it is a, a practice of helping get some of the fundamentals um, of, a, of a well-designed team uh, in, into mm-hmm. place. I would add a third element to what Windsor brought up around relationship technique, but also just around context and the, um, the performance objective of learning how to sail a boat really creates, you know, kind of a, an immediate purpose. And then I think there's a broader purpose around what's the emergent discovery about the profession, about nature, et cetera. So I think that's a big part of it, you know, which I think gives you some insights into, you know, relationships matter in teams, the application of skills and techniques matter and all that. And, I think it also is about, you know, what are we actually there for and having a compelling purpose, um, something that really lines us all together with a North Star um, is powerful. You know, there were multiple purposes there, but I think that to me also is a big piece of this that, you know, one of the moments that I loved is when um, 
Pym had uh, orchestrated a sudden handover of the ship to the participants. Um, so we were learning for a couple of days how to sail parts of the ship. And uh, at one moment, the, the captain and Pym called everybody onto the deck, um, actually back by the, you know, by the helm. And we were all standing around there um, by the wheel, just like in that picture in the middle. And he basically said, all right, guys, it's time for you to take over the ship. And the four teams were standing there, you know, with their jaws just dropping. And, um, and that was game on. And I think that for me was a real pivotal turning point when it was sort of like having a real performance task of like sailing now as a team of teams to the next part of our destination, injected a level of energy and excitement. And it gave us something really to rally around a real perf challenging performance task. And uh, it was exhilarating to watch. I mean, those hours after that were for me amazing. Just, you know, and we had a videographer there. We have all this video production footage that we haven't um, produced yet. But uh, that for me, that next day or 12 hours was the peak, one of the peak parts of the voyage um, that really stands out to me. So anyways, that, that kind of builds a little bit on what you were asking there, Windsor, what, what triggered for me. All right. Um, just to share a little bit about what we're planning for next year, we are in uh, 2020 looking to do a voyage along the Cuban coast. Uh, sometimes when we do the, the Nautilus experience, it's part of a regatta of tall ships. So there may be other tall ships with us along the voyage. I believe the one in Cuba, we're not going to be part of a regatta. But, no. you know, part of what we, we discover other ships along the way. Um, but this one's going to be amazing um, in, in Cuba. We'll probably sail out to Grand Cayman and back. So there will be some time um, to jump overboard, to go to some beaches. I think there's parts of Cuba that are really off the grid for tourists or just, you know, haven't been captured, you know, haven't, you can't get there unless you go by boat or just, so we're going to go to some really pristine, you know, beaches and do a little bit of that. So that's going to be exciting. Um, if you like a more warm weather one, although I do understand out in the Caribbean sea, it can be pretty, you know, it can be game on in terms of wind and waves. And so, you know, that could be exciting. Um, yeah, you definitely could bring snorkeling gear. Maybe we'll get yeah. some scuba gear. I'm a scuba diver, so I'd love to do a bit of scuba diving. And then we're going to do a Norwegian coast one again. That'll be a 10-day voyage. This one's going to go uh, further north, though. So it's going to be Arctic Norway. Mm -hmm. So kind of from like the northwestern part of Norway up further. Um, it's just a paradise up in there. And, and I think that's the thing I've appreciated about all the voyages is you kind of get off the beaten path, off the norm, no, normal tourist weight places. And you're going to places that you'd never be able to, you would never think to go to. And you don't even know that exists that are just um, magnificent. So the physical beauty is just um, of nature is just amazing. So yeah, and the the Norwegian one will also be with uh, two other ships. So there yeah. will be uh, the Christian Reddick, that's a Norwegian tall ship, and the Gulden Leeuw, that's a Dutch tall ship. So we'll, we will be racing as well. So there will be parts where we we are we going to race. So that's going to be uh, For the Norwegian one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's a little bit about those. I see another question came up about how do we deal with team conflict, if any. Well, um, yeah, I would say that definitely this voyage creates intrapersonal conflict where you become in conflict with yourself and your own learning edges. There can be interpersonal, you know, when you're with people for 10 days or six days in, it's not, you know, cramped quarters or anything, but it's tight, you know, tight quarters being close to people. Um, you know, there's interpersonal conflict within the teams you know, there can be conflict within the teams. And I think that's all part of the learning. And so that's really about coaching. And, you know, a lot of people have skills on the boat. So I think we as program faculty do a lot of coaching, individual, interpersonal team. The participants themselves have a lot of skills. So there's a lot of ways of doing that. But yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you, it's not a conflict-free experience. But I wouldn't say that it's, um, I didn't feel like, you know, we reached a point where there's like so much conflict on the boat, like there's mutinies happening and, you know, that kind of level of conflict. So, um, yeah. No, so. but but I would say enough for it to contribute to the learning yeah. experience. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and if you, if you think of conflict as a signal for change, I mean, there was just a huge right. amount of change going on. So it yeah. was a wonderful creative tension. Yeah. 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 So if you want to learn more, you know, you can go over to teamcoachingzone.com forward slash Nautilus. We've got a, a nice PDF download that has more detail on the voyages next summer. And, um, you know, typically the way we do this is you have to apply and we do a one-on-one -on -one interview with you for about 30 minutes or so just to 
you know, just to kind of clarify expectations, make sure you're a good fit, screen people that may or may not be a good fit for that. And then, you know, um, you know, once we kind of have that, if you're interested, then you can apply. And uh, we do some a couple of orientation webinars in advance of the voyages to start building the community and, um, you know, start the process of co-creating and co-learning together about what we want to create together in a, in a given voyage. So you can yeah. check that out. And um, yeah, Tim? Yeah, and also think more about what, what's like being on board, you know, what to bring, what not to bring, uh, what can you expect uh, quite, uh, to regards to sleeping, to privacy, all that kind of stuff. We're going to cover yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. So if you have got any questions around that, uh, please do. So I'm seeing we're just a few minutes away from the hour and um, I want to see if there's any other questions out there or anything from the faculty else to share. We are going to be sending this video around, you know, the participants who signed up but couldn't attend the live session. So we will be sending this around. Thank you, Windsor. Great having you here. Great questions that you're asking. Yeah. Anything else here? You know, you can come on microphone, pop them in the chat window. Anything that comes to you that you'd like to, to know or learn about. I see, I see uh, Ruth asking, should I bring snorkeling gear? So, Pim, given that you were just talking about gear there, uh, the answer yeah, yes. Cuba, definitely. I think Cuba is going to be uh, an amazing trip. Uh, I've been with the World Swan in uh, the Caribbean uh, six years ago, and it's just amazing to sail with a tall ship in the Caribbean. You know, it's, it's, it's really awesome. And Cuba is really like pristine, you know, the, the beaches there are really uh, undiscovered by, by large tourists, like, like, like the other islands in, in the Caribbean. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to going there. It was a, I think we, um, we really wanted to go to Cuba, you know, what was one of the, 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 the trips that, that, was, that was really calling us forth. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining today. Great questions. Uh, hope you found it interesting and uh, you take away some learning. Um, and if you're interested in joining us, we'd love to have you apply and you can go to teamcoachingzone.com forward slash Nautilus and uh, maybe we'll see you aboard one of these voyages and wish you all a great rest of 2019 for you and uh, much success with all the teams that you're a part of and coaching and uh, have a safe and, and wonderful holiday season, everyone. Yeah, happy holiday, you, everyone. everyone. Happy holidays yeah. to everyone. Yeah. And happy Absolutely. new year. Yeah. All right. Here's to 2020. <laughs> exactly.